Oh, welcome to Ground Control. I, I'm still dialing this plane in, trying to get the CG set up on it. Um, it's hard to go out with just two batteries. They have minimum RC sent me this plane, and they sent me the Spitfire, and there was a battery in each one of the kits. So, so I've been using both batteries in these flight tests and in the maiden flight, and. It's kind of difficult to get it dialed in when you just have two battery packs. So I made a little an adapter so I can use my 250 milliamp hour batteries that have um, pH2 connectors on it. So now I've got six batteries to play around with on this on this aircraft. So I'll show you two flights and um, what I found. Um, I think I mentioned it in the last video, but what I found was, and this is this is my fault as well but the stock props that I had put on this plane when I first went out and did the maiden flight in the in the review part one where it just barely had enough power to keep it you know maintain altitude at full throttle I did not measure those props before I put them on here and in fact they were 60 millimeter props instead of 65 millimeter props so I was lucky that in my little inventory of micro props, I actually had a couple of 65 millimeter props, quadcopter props. So I had them in, you know, rotating in both directions with one millimeter hubs on them. So on that fourth take, when I was out there in the in the uh, review part one, it actually had 65 millimeter props on it at that time, and you could see that it was. It was pulling it through the air fairly well. I still don't feel like it's quite a one-to-one -one thrust to weight ratio on this plane as far as the power system. So, so I'm going to be looking to do something about that. But until that happens, I uh, will let you watch the uh, the two uh, flights that I performed this morning, or two two flights that I videotaped, so you can see what's going on with the plane. Um, much much smoother flight. I got the CG set much further forward and so when I was out there today I was playing around with the CG and also with the deflection of the control surfaces trying to get everything tuned in the way I liked but um, I'm, I'm almost there I think one more flight session and I'll have this plane flying the way I want it to fly with the stock power system and once I get everything set up on the CG and get all the control surface deflections, the dual rates and expos, everything set up just the way I like it. Then I'll, I'll look at putting a more powerful um, set of motors on here. So anyway, here's the flight videos and then I'll come back and tell you exactly what I, what I changed and what I think I'm going to have to change going forward to get this plane flying the way I want. See you in a minute. And we've got three to four mile an hour wind out here this morning. And yeah, the CG is much, much better now. But I'm running at full throttle. I just think that this plane is underpowered with the 716 motors and the 65 millimeter props and you can see that even in a 3-4 mile an hour wind it's having a hard time pushing against it but yeah flying much much better now I think maybe the CG needs to be even a little bit further forward but yeah much much better That's pretty stable, even in a three to four mile an hour wind, which isn't bad for a plane that weighs only 40.3 grams all up weight. And it moves through the air pretty well, even being uh, underpowered like it is. Pretty neat though, huh? That's a nice looking airframe. I really, really like this airframe. There's a little closer look at it. And I think I need to put a little more expo in my aileron. <laughs> uh, 
That's pretty slick. It is a very, very nice flying airframe. I have to say, I really like this airframe. But I definitely want more power on it. But I didn't want to leave you with the video that I gave you last time. That wouldn't be fair to this plane or to Minimum RC. We're going to take another circuit and bring it in because I'm, I've been at full throttle this whole time. I need more expo on my aileron. But. Yeah, I think, I think that's, I think that's good on the CG. Sorry about the sun. It is in a bad place this morning. <laughs> and I can't run this too long because it's cold out this morning. It's in the low 30s. And the 716 motors are just, you know, it's a little underpowered in my opinion. But excellent, excellent airframe, man. This is, that is a cool looking little plane. I like that a lot. And it's a little speedier than I thought it would be, you know? <laughs> okay, so we're going to bring it back down here and bring it in as I am at full throttle. And go one more circuit and bring it down a little bit. Ouch. Okay, so, um, much much better flight right of this little b25 and it was cold out there um, it was in the low 30s so i think i would have gotten a little more power out of it if it had been warmer weather but i had to go out in the morning to get that uh three to four mile an hour wind to, to fly this in okay so what i found was that the even though i have 45 percent expo in the ailerons they're still pretty twitchy and so I'm going to be changing um, my control rod on the servo and on the control horn. That'll give me a little better resolution on the aileron, and I think that'll take care of that. Now, if you watch my landing, the problem that I was having was that I, I didn't have enough elevator to flare at the end. I had full elevator in you know, when it contacted the ground, so I actually scaled up my elevator in my transmitter from 100% to 125% to get more movement out of the elevator. But in addition to that, I, I'm going to have to move the uh, control rod on the elevator as well on the, on the servo. So I have a little bit more movement in the elevator. I'd like to have a little more pitch so that I get a decent, you know, angle of attack when I'm coming in for landing so I can make that flare and, and, and set it down easy as it was with uh, with full elevator coming in I it was it was coming down pretty fast so so anyway I have my CG set forward uh, quite a bit from where I was um, the 10 millimeters when I, I had it set at 10 millimeters and I think it was during the first flight or maybe maybe it was one of the flights I didn't I didn't video. 
but it still felt it felt just slightly nose heavy to me at, at 10 millimeters maybe that's because I'm used to flying aircraft with a very neutral balance on the CG and maybe that's why it felt a little nose heavy to me so I would suggest that you go ahead and, and start off with the 10 millimeter back from the leading edge and I want to make sure that I measured my CG in the same place each time so right here where the star is and then toward the leading edge of the wing you see the point of the star so 10 millimeters back is just right about where that second line is where it cuts across the blue circle and where I ended up with my CG where I felt like it, it was neutrally balanced, it wasn't nose heavy, and it wasn't tail heavy, was right there where the point of that star is. So I've got my CG set about three millimeters further back than the specified CG. So mine is 13 millimeters back of the leading edge of the wing as opposed to 10 millimeters back. But I, I would suggest to start off with 10. I think most people are more comfortable flying a plane that's slightly nose heavy. So start start off there at 10 millimeters and if it feels a little nose heavy to you, move it back a couple millimeters. But I check my CG each time right there where the point of that star is. So I make sure that, that every time I'm balancing my CG, I'm, I'm balancing it at exactly the same place on the wing each time. So you, you might want to think about that. But anyway. I'm going to conduct at least one more flight session, put six more battery packs through this plane before I do the tips video because I want to make the adjustments on the control linkage and, um, and see if I can get the ailerons toned down a little bit and get a little more throw on the elevator and I think if I can do that I will be happy with the control authority and the roll and the pitch on this plane and also so I can get a decent flare when coming in and landing it and then once I get that all set up I'll, I'll produce a tips video with everything that I've done you know what my control surface deflections are etc etc and then I will look at putting a more powerful uh, set of motors on this plane so anyway it's a it's a great airframe I had a lot of fun with it it's going to be a blast to fly this thing when I get everything tuned on it, get everything, get it flying exactly the way I want it, and get a little more power on it. I think it's going to be an absolute blast after that. So, so stay tuned. Um, I will be working on that and um, on down the road, not too far off in the future, I will have a different set of motors on here and see if we can do some aerobatics with this B-25 bomber. But anyway, thanks for watching. Please give a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I want to thank Minimum RC for providing me with this plane for review. And I will be building the Spitfire um, as soon as I can. So thanks for watching. See you in the air.